So today we're talking about what consumers can do to lower the impact of their heating in particular on, uh, on the environment. This is an extremely important uh, area of work for us. If we want to decarbonize our society by 2050 uh, and taking into account that heating uh, makes up a, a high percentage of the cost for consumers uh, in using their energy, it's about 80% uh, in terms of the energy used in buildings. It's both policymakers and consumers themselves that have to do their bit in order to decarbonize by 2050. So there are a lot of uh, different things that consumers can do, and they recognise this. Uh, they're very willing to take action individually uh, to deal with climate change. Uh, but in relation to their heating systems, they obviously are quite stuck with the ones they like. Uh, and that means they, have the one, they like to use the ones that they already have. And so if we're going to really decarbonise, we have to look at how we actually decarbonise the vectors that they use to heat themselves, i.e. the gas, the electricity that they're using for their heating. So one of the most important things we can say from what the poll has shown is that we need to make sure that decarbonised and renewable gas is available for the consumers of Europe. A second part is not only energy efficient buildings but also efficient heating systems. So they really need uh, to move from fossil uh, fed uh, heating devices to heat pumps for example or other renewable energy sources. The long term I think it's important so for 2050 and beyond um, I think what is important is really to look at the decarbonization in, in a more system view. So look at interaction between energy supply, distribution, heating and cooling technologies, insulation of the house. So take really a, a view at how these uh, elements interact because these are the elements that will give the energy performance of buildings that we need in 2050 and beyond. So not any more siloed policies, but policies that really interact. And here we're talking about energy policies, climate policies, but also skilling uh, that we need for that transition. I think this is important in the long term. The poll also found that the general public in Europe believe that national governments should also take a leading role in addressing climate change. And so from that point of view they need to create the right framework uh, which would allow the uptake of new gases, the decarbonised gases, the renewable gases, as well as finding the right ways to deliver uh, on all the various options for heating that there are so that Basically, the consumer will have a better informed choice of how to go forward and contribute to reducing their climate impact. A huge part of our house stock is not energy efficient. They're, they need to be renovated, refurbished. And that's certainly something that consumers can do to contribute to. Now, of course, it is very expensive and it's very complicated. And that means that if you really want to help consumers to engage in that, into that transition, you need to give price signals, incentives, but also to assist them in making it much more easier. Well, we believe that uh, in particular for energy poor people, living in well insulated buildings that have good heating systems is the way forward because it lowers their energy bills. Uh, this, of course, is, is a difficult issue to tackle, also because here the responsibility of member states plays an important role. Uh, it's, it's often seen as social policy, so member states are, are very careful uh, in that area. I think from our side, we are trying to see how, for example, the financial instruments that we have available at European level can contribute to alleviating energy poverty in the member states.